Hello, Distant Lightning. On this episode, are the Lightning gooning it up for the next season? With the addition of Witkowski and Shen, will other teams have to put up their lukes come September? Find out on this episode of Distant Lightning. <laughs> Okay, so thinking about lightning paladins of recent memory, uh, if we look at last season, um, a lot of people look to Braden Coburn. You know, he's kind of the big, tall guy in our defense. Uh, they really look to him in past seasons to uh, put up his fists and take care of business when needed. Uh, but really, he didn't do much of that last season. Uh, maybe he was asked not to fight as much. Also, he's getting older. He's not a young guy anymore. He probably wants to watch his health and, and not get scratched due to injuries uh, more than he needs to. Um, he was 10th on the team, both in penalty minutes with 34 and hits with 96 last season. Uh, first place by a long shot is uh, Cedric Paquette. Uh, he was first in both categories with 80 penalty, penalty minutes and a whopping 269 hits. Coburn, you know, people look to him maybe to be the paladin, protector of other players, uh, but he didn't really show up last year much. Um, Alex Kalorn's another guy that he's pretty good about stepping up for his teammates um, when they get roughed up. In the comments, I'll stick a link to a video from HockeyFights.com where he stuck up for Sergachev um, and... Um, I know I appreciate that when the players are looking out for each other. If we think about past Paladins beyond last season, obviously Brian Boyle comes to mind. We all miss him, uh, but he was probably the biggest protector in the past. And when somebody was getting out of line with one of our more finesse players, good old Brian Boyle would step in the way and take care of it. Uh, remember when he shamed Abdelkader by doing the chicken dance? <laughs> well, in case you don't, I've got a video a link to that video in the comments too. Jake Dotchin, he's another player that I really liked watching. I liked having him on the team. Um, when I heard that he wasn't able to really get out of training camp last season um, because he had, I don't know, out of weight, he was eating too much, I don't know what the deal was. Um, but he really exhibited good paladin behavior, especially around our net. Um, he'd knock him out of our crease, and he'd back it up with his fist when he needed to. Uh, if you look in the comments, I've linked to a good fight that exemplifies that, um, again, from HockeyFights.com. Okay, up-and-comers on the team. Uh, if I look at a couple players that uh, might have fought a little bit uh, but seemed to stick up for their teammates, Eric Cernak comes to mind. Uh, he was second on the team in hits with 198, and he had a couple of fights last year, and he really proved that he'll stand up to anyone when he took on Tom Wilson of the Capitals uh, right near the end of the season. I've got a link to that video, that fight in the comments. Uh, Yanni Gord's another one. Uh, he actually had the most fights on the team last year with four, and uh, he's a decent fighter, come to find out. Uh, there's a video in the comments you can watch. Um, he seems to pick his fights, though, versus stick up for his teammates. So I don't know if he's really reached that paladin level. And based on his speed and his growing skill on offense, he probably shouldn't take on that role. Um, probably keep it that way. Okay, so um, you might agree, you might not, but uh, I really believe that hitting leads to fighting. If you're hitting people, knocking them down a lot, someone's probably going to take unkindly to it and want to... Uh, uh, punch you in the face a couple times, maybe. So if we look at last season, who's doing the hitting on our team? Well, number one, Cedric Paquette. Uh, 269 hits, as I mentioned already. It ended up getting him into only two fights, honestly. Uh, what do we see from Seti? He's trying to draw people into fights, but he doesn't necessarily fight himself because he's trying to get the other guy the extra two-minute instigation, uh, which he's pretty good at. So he ends up getting uh, drawing a lot of penalties for us. And, of course, we see what our team can do on the power play. So that combination of uh, Cedric Paquette uh, really baiting players and then getting our team on the power play a little bit more often helps us out. He had uh, 80 penalty minutes last year, um, and that was number one on the team for most minutes two fights. Eric Cernak, a uh, young guy coming up on D. Um, he was number two in hits with 198. That got him into two fights, one with Tom Wilson, as I mentioned. He had 58 penalty minutes. 
um, number two on the team. Number three in penalty minutes was Adam Erne. Now here's somebody who's got size, physicality, and I really think we're going to see more from him coming soon. Um, he just might grow into Paladin role since he's on that checking line a lot. I personally think he could be moved up on the lines, maybe try him out third line, maybe roll the dice and put him with Stamkos. I think it would be nice to see a Stamkos with someone big and dynamic like uh, Adam, um, but that could just be you know fantasy of mine, fantasy line of mine. Uh, Dan Girardi was fourth in penalty minutes. Um, I'm sorry, the number of hits with 151 last season, but he had no fights. Uh, so he got away with them, you could say. Uh, Matthew Joseph was fifth on the list with hits at 129. So who have the Lightning picked up recently that might be fulfill this Paladin role? Luke Woodkowski. He's back. So like a predator seeking its prey, he'll line up some unlucky SOB and lay him out. Uh, there's no two ways about it. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing when the Coop utilizes his particular set of talents, perhaps against the Capitals' Tom Wilson or maybe the Rat from Boston. Um, speaking of which, here exclusively on the Distant Lightning video vlog, we've obtained an unverified alleged phone call from a drunken Coach Cooper to Luke Witkowski before an Islanders game back in 2017. Let's have a listen. Witkowski. Yeah, welcome to the team. You're here for, really, for one shift. It's all we need from you. Tavares. Eliminate him! Wow. Well, we'll never know if it was real or not, but check out Luke's fight against Tanner Glass, which was very real, in the comments below. Okay, Luke Shen, another addition to the team, also named Luke. And I really don't know a lot about him, except I found a YouTube video from 2009 that was called The Human Eraser. And it's a highlight reel, basically him dumping people uh, into the, over the boards into their own bench. Uh, as of right now, it looks like Kevin Shattenkirk is going to fill out our um, third right D. Uh, so I don't know when we might see Shen or Witkowski come out, but maybe Coop will keep them for special occasions, shall we say. Uh, if you want to see it, uh, that um, Human Eraser video, I have a link down in the comments. Enjoy. Okay, that's it on this episode of Distant Lightning. Thanks for tuning in, and check out next time where I'm going to talk through projected lines for this coming season, obviously assuming Braden Point gets signed and Adam Ernay gets signed. So look for that one to come out next. Take care, everyone. Thanks.